Hey y'all, let's take a look at two things today. The second part is geometry, but let's look at uh, square roots first. Let's find a rule. At some point in the past, possibly Thursday, somebody did a bunch of these and went, wait a minute, I found something interesting. So let's do it. The square root of 64 divided by 4. Well, the 64 divided by 4 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Right? Okay. Well, this 81 divided by 9 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 100 divided by 25 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Now look at this. What you could actually do is bust up these two into two pieces like this. The square root of 64 divided by the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 4 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is also 4. Hmm. How about this one? The square root of 81 over the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. The square root of 100 um, is going to be 10. The square root of, excuse me, that should be, yeah. The square root of 25 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So, that gives us the rule. Anytime we see something like this, we can bust it up into two pieces. We can say this is the square root of 7 over the square root of 4. And this isn't just some theory. I mean, it works every single time. You can actually stick in, if you want, to your calculator, 7 divided by 4, and then go square root, and you'll get an answer. Then you can go, okay, the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 4, you'll get the same answer. We know what the square root of 4 is on the, in this case, so we can just go, okay, square root of 7 over 2, that's our answer, right, broken down. How about this one? The square root of 3 over 2, that's going to be the square root of 3 over the square root of 2, right? Now, we don't want to leave it like this. Remember how we have to make a ratio out of the denominator, a rational number? That's not a rational number, so we need to do the square root of 2 on both top and bottom. That gives us the square root of 6 on top and 2 on the bottom. Remember those? Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's just simplify these two. And pretty much a piece of cake here. All we do is we write, that's the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. And again, we don't want to leave an irrational number like a square root in the denominator. So we'll just multiply by the square root of 7 on the top and the bottom. That gives us the square root of 21 over 7. That's it. Just stop right there. Okay. Same thing here. We can rewrite ne uh, square root of 8 over square root of 5. Multiply by the square root of 5 on top and bottom. We get the square root of 40 on the top and 5 on the bottom. Now, you do make sure that at the very end, you can, you know, you, this can be broken up into two parts. That's going to be, uh, this, well, I'll just rewrite it. The square root of 4 times 10 and then over 5. This can be pulled out. The square root of 4 is 2. So you have 2 square root of 10 over 5. 2 over 5 can't be reduced as a fraction, so just leave it right there. And there we go. That's done. Okay. Now, let's look at this. We're going to add them. And all we're going to do on these is treat these. I mean, we're going to do the same exact process. Then we're going to find a common denominator, which will be a piece of cake, because these are just numbers and not, you know, X's and Y's and all that jazz. So let's go ahead and write this. Um, we'll go square root of 2 times the square root of 5. And I'll hold off on a second. Plus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2, right? Okay, this is this one. So let's go ahead and rewrite. We'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. On this one, we'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. Okay, so square root of 2 times square root of 5 is square root of 10 over 5. And this is going to be plus square root of 10, this time over 2. We want one fraction. So let's go ahead and just slop these together here. And we'll go, of course, the common denominator obviously is 10. So 2 times this, and then 2 times that. And this will be 5 times this, and then 5 times that. So we have 2 square root of 10 plus 5 square root of 10 over 10, right? Well, these are like terms. 2 of something plus 5 of something is 7 of something. And that's our last answer. Here we go. Got it? Okay, let's try one more. The only difference in this one is that each one of these is being multiplied by an outside number. You might want to call it, you can call it a coefficient if you want to. And don't forget, this is going to be, you know, fractionally speaking, that's going to be on the top, right? 3 over 1, 5 over 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's rewrite the first one. 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. And we'll go ahead and rationalize. That means square root of 7 there, the square root of 7 there. That gives us 3 
times the square root of 21 over 7. Good? All right, let's go with this one. This will be 5 square root of 7 over the square root of 3. You can rationalize this as well. And that gives us 5 square root of 21 over 3 this time. All right. Well, we know the, square, uh, the uh, common denominator is going to be 21. So we'll multiply this by 3, and then multiply this by 3, and then multiply this by 7, and multiply that by 7. So this time we get a 9 square root of 21 over 21. And this time we get a 35 square root of 21 over 21, right? We have 9 of something. We have 35 of something. That gives us 44 of something, and that's all over 21. And 44 divided by 21 can't be broken down, uh, you know, reduced as a fraction. You can divide it. There's no point in doing that. I guess that would be 2.095238 repeating decimal, but don't worry about that. Just leave it. Okay. Good enough. All right. Let's try another one. You give this a whirl. Pause it and go ahead and, cop and uh, copy this down. You try it yourself and see what you get. Okay, I'll do this first. I got, I got a 2, square root of 2 over square root of 7. I'm just going to do the whole entire first term. And multiply by square root of 7, and then square root of 7 again. And now I'll get a 2, square root of 14 over 7. And I'll hold off on that. The second one, I'll go 5, square root of 7 over square root of 2. And then multiply by square root of 2, square root of 2. That gives me 5, square root of 14 over 2. All right, well, common denominator, obviously, we need, we need to multiply by 2. So 2 here and 2 there, and then 7 here and then 7 there. So I have 4 square root of 14 over 14, and I have 35 square root of 14 over 14. 35 of something plus 4 of something gives me 39 of that something, and that's all over 14. This can't be reduced. Of course, you could divide it 2.428571 with repeating decimal, but you don't need to do that. So, okay. All right, good enough. Okay, let's look very quickly at something called congruency. This is just a fancy, smanchy way of saying something's geometrically equal. Um, so they say numbers are equal, shapes, lines, and angles are congruent. The symbol for congruent is this. Yoink, that little thing. You should be familiar with that. And a famous saying is... A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, sorry, that has nothing to do with this at all. The famous saying for the triangles is congruent triangles, they have congruent what's? Angles and congruent sides. Okay, and this is the famous little saying, the little abbreviation. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, you could say. Okay, all right, so we'll look at one. There are two congruent triangles. We can tell because we have two angles. This is the same as that angle. This is the same as that angle. That, of course, tells us AA means AAA. So that tells us that the third angles are both exactly the same. If there is one side that is the same as the other side, that means all the sides are the same. Okay. So we can make a little equation. We know that this side is the same as this side. So we can go ahead and make a, you know, set it up that way and solve. They want us to find x and y. You know what? Y, there's no y there. They mean, we mean x and p. Must be a Microsoft computer mistake or something, you know. Okay. We're going to find the bottom side first. I'm going to move the 12x over here and turns into negative 6x. I'm going to move the 2 over here that turns into negative 6. So x is just equal to 1. All right, let's find p. Well, um, we have found that x is equal to 1. So 4 times x is just going to be 4, right? Plus 1 is 5. Well, then that tells us that p is also equal to 5. And there you go. Okay. All right. Try the first uh, practice problem. Go ahead and pause it and give it a whirl. Okay. Here's how I want to take care of the first one. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5. That gives us square root of 15 plus, oh, excuse me, over 5. The second one, we'll go the square root of 5 over the square root of 3, multiplied by the square root of 3, the top and bottom. That gives us the square root, oops, square root of 15 over 3 this time. Okay, well, let's go ahead and multiply by 3 here and 3 there, and then by 5 here and by 5 here. So we have 3 square root of 15 over 15, 
and we have five. Wait a minute, did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, times square root of 15. Yeah, five square root of 15 over 50. So here we have eight square root of 15 over 15. There we go. All right. Go ahead and pause it and try B. See what you get for that. All right, I'll just go right down and go 2, square root of 2 over square root of 7, and then multiply that by square root of 7 and square root of 7. And that gives me 2, square root of 14 over 7. Okay, good enough. This one, I'll go 3, square root of 7 over the square root of 2, multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2, and that gives me 3, square root of 14 over 2 this time. Okay, so we know the common denominator is 14. So I'll multiply by 2 here, multiply by 2 there, multiply by 7 here, and then 7 there. And that gives me 4 square root of 14 over 14. This gives me 21 square root of 14 over 14. And the entire thing, the 4 and the 21 together, 25 square root of 14 over 14. And there you go. All right, one last one. Uh, pause it and go ahead and solve for n and p. And, and make sure, or excuse me, that should be x. Wow, weird, all right. And don't forget, you can take your book and physically go like that, you know, if you want to see it like that, or you can just redraw the second triangle. These are parallel, so you know they're uh, congruent triangles. Okay, go ahead and pause it and try it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw this triangle to the right, and I'm gonna flip it, you know, and go all the way over. Okay, this is gonna be four here, and this is gonna be P on this side, and the bottom is going to be 12x minus 7. All right, so uh, let's do it this way. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and find x first. Since this side is congruent to that side, that gives me an equation 4x plus, oops, plus 1 equals 12x minus 7. The x, 12x goes over here, becomes negative 8x. The 1 goes over here and becomes negative 1. Minus 7 is negative 8. So x is equal to 1. You got that solved. All right, where is p? It's right over here. Well, p is the same thing as 4x minus 1. So x is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. So p is equal to 3. And there we go. All right. See, you sneaked a little more geometry in there while you weren't even looking. So anyway, see, your, your friends at public schools, or, or, or maybe they're not taking Saxon math, are sitting there struggling an entire year trying to take geometry as one course and getting all lost and confused and oh they like this much better but then they forget all their algebra when they come back 15 months later and try to take more algebra you you got saxon so anyway all right good luck with problem set today see you guys next time